Dear Truckers of Canada, by standing up for freedom, by taking a stand for righteousness, you've become more than truckers. Each and every one of you have become founders of a new nation. Allow me to explain. Removing Justin Trudeau is only the beginning. It is the start to removing an unjust parliament and an unjust court system. In 2019, Parliament removed the spread of false news from the criminal code, just one year before the pandemic of 2020. And then 18 years before that, in 2001, the Supreme Court of Canada reaffirmed something called judicial notice where a man taking the title of judge usurps the right of God and declares fact without evidence or proof. The Supreme Court of Canada said that a judge, by declaring judicial notice, can dispense with the need for evidence, so long as that non-scientist judge thinks that something is clearly uncontroversial and beyond reasonable dispute. Once upon a time, that the Earth was the center of the universe used to be an uncontroversial fact. It was beyond reasonable dispute. Back then, the Earth being the center of the solar system and the universe was probably on mainstream news. And then those judges, hundreds of years ago, could declare judicial notice that the earth was the center of everything. Is this still a fact? Can man be trusted? Can a judge be trusted? Today, judicial notice combined with the removal of spreading false news from the criminal code what does that do to society? What kind of world does that create? One could almost think that by flooding the media with falsehoods and then having non-scientist judges declare those falsehoods to be fact using judicial notice, well that would be the recipe for a court system built on lies. And then a government built on lies. Lies that are only possible thanks to Parliament and the Supreme Court. But does this problem go back even further than the 2001 Supreme Court? Let me ask this. How many of us are free? How many hours a day do we work for someone other than ourselves or our family? Does a 30% tax mean that one-third of our day is spent enriching someone else? Like a politician? A government bureaucracy? The Queen? But what if it did not end there? After giving one-third of your labor to someone else, one-seventh of what you have left one-seventh of your purchases and one-seventh of your food is taken as well through sales taxes. 15% of everything. And then, carbon taxes. Half the fuel you use for the privilege of spending a third of your day feeding the government gets taken as well. Then a third of the labor you use to heat your home also goes to heat a senator's summer house. And in the future, how much of the air we breathe do they plan to carbon tax? 20%? 30%? And for what reason? Climate change? when every time in the Earth's history that had a higher atmospheric CO2, there was also a higher biomass. Greater rainforests, larger animals, giant fauna. 
carbon dioxide is plant food? What kind of barren death cult would demonize that which makes plants grow? Those who have greenhouses may know of a secret that if you want your plants to grow faster, larger, and more productive, you can do so by adding CO2 to the greenhouse. And that greenhouse effect, where supposedly there is a pane of CO2, like a pane of glass above us, that lets light in and then reflects it back down like a one-way mirror, does that actually exist? When someone finally turns CO2 into a one-way mirror, please let me know. For that invention would surely win a Nobel Prize. So, if 50% or more of your labor goes to the enrichment of someone else, what would you call that? Slavery, perhaps? How did we get here? Have we been deceived? And what are the foundations of this deception? Could we have been cheated starting from the very ground we stand upon? When you want some land, some land to grow food and raise your family, what do you do? Do you buy land? Do you pay money for land so that you may work and raise your family? Do you enslave yourself to a mortgage? And who are you paying? Do you think the Creator wants your money? Do you think Mother Earth wants your mortgage? Does the universe want your debt? Or is it someone else on the other side of an ocean who wants your money? Does she take your money for something she got for free 250 years ago? And then in her greed, she makes you pay taxes for having that land, living on that land, and keeping that land for your children. That is the profane foundation upon which today, this day, was built. Built by a greed that is unsatisfied by your money, ungrateful for your labor. And now, it wants the very body that your soul lives in. It wants to dictate what you are allowed to put into that vessel that was given to you by the Creator. This greed wants to dictate how much you are allowed to live. It wants to monitor and tax your every breath. Have you ever read the patent about turning your body's activity into a cryptocurrency? They already want to turn you into money, disposable money. And what of those machines, those manacles, some of us wear on our wrists. You know, those arm bands that measure your heartbeat, how often you turn over in your sleep, and how much oxygen you consume. What do you think is the long-term plan for those shackles? Today it's injections, tomorrow food, and the day after tomorrow, slavery. The media already demonizes food. What you're eating has a carbon footprint. You have to pay carbon taxes for eating. They want you to pay a carbon tax for the privilege of living. Does the Creator collect taxes? Does Mother Earth take away from your table? Or does the Creator give? Does Mother Earth feed? And like any parent, happiness, enlightenment, and gratitude is all that is asked for in return. Such 
is a world founded upon love. Such is the foundation that the Creator and the Earth want us to build upon. But beware of the merchants of greed. They will come to you with bribes. They will give one group favors, promises, agreements, and then none to another. Do this, they will say, and in exchange we will give you something that the others won't have. That is how the merchants of greed work. That is how they divide us. That is how they corrupt every one they touch. There are no others. It is us. Only us. The merchants of greed are well dressed. They carry titles of power. And they also hold implements of violence. But fear not. They are weak. For if they cannot divide us into others, we win. We become the founders of a new nation. For example, when you attend a courtroom to discuss a bill of exchange, otherwise known as a violation ticket, for some alleged infraction, when you attend a courtroom for an unlawful theft of your property or your freedom by a merchant of greed, when you attend a courtroom either in person, in camera, or by phone, ask this. Does the judge stand under the highest authority? If the judge refuses to say yes, and offer some semantic substitute. Ask again, does the judge stand under the highest authority, under the Creator God? If you get some verbal diatribe that does not contain the answer yes, ask again a third time. Does the judge stand under the highest authority? under the Creator, under the laws common to all women and men. And if that judge still fails to respond with a yes, then say this, The judge does not stand under the Creator. Only animals refuse to stand under the highest possible authority because they know no better. Therefore, the judge is neither man nor woman. The judge must be a creature for refusing to stand under God. Therefore, the judge is unfit for the bench, unfit to pass judgment on men, and unfit to be heard. This court is out of order. Dismiss the judge. And if the judge says something to distract, such as words about standing under Her Majesty the Queen, simply ask, Is the Queen God? Is the Queen Creator of all? And if that judge fails to say no, then declare that judge a fool, unfit for the bench unfit for the courtroom, and unfit for any proceeding where men and women stand under God. So thank you, truckers. I thank you. I thank every woman and man. For you are founders of a new nation under the Creator. We shall work together to create a new world founded upon truth, love, and enlightenment. A life well lived is not measured by years of worldly existence. A life well lived is not measured by fortunes. 
It is measured by deeds done, momentous acts of courage, and the knowledge that we use each and every last bit of matter in our bodies under the guidance of our God-given souls for the service of excellence. For as Plato said long ago, justice is excellence of the soul. We are justice. We are founders of a new nation. And we stand for freedom. Thank you.